Hey guys, it's Maria here with another teaching tip. This week I wanted to focus on an area kind of near and dear to my heart and that is gospel doctrine. I've been a gospel doctrine teacher for the last five years in our ward and was just recently released so I could serve in the young women, but I wanted to pass on some of the things I have learned over the last five years to help those of you who are gospel doctrine teachers and honestly those of you who are just teachers in church in general. A lot of these tips could be used for any calling, but I wanted to kind of pass on some of the things I have learned. Um, I thought I'd break it up based on time. So generally I have about a week to prep for a lesson. So there are some things I do, you know, a week out and some things I do throughout the week, some the night before and some the day of. So I thought I would share those in that order. Um, first and foremost, a week out. So usually the Sunday before I start kind of prepping my lesson, I am not one of those people that can spend all week all day studying the scriptures. I wish I could, but I have six kids, so that doesn't work out for me. So instead I do little snippets throughout the week and then kind of compile things on Saturday night before I teach. Um, but a week out, I at least try, on the Sunday before I teach, I try to read through the lesson and read through the scriptures one time. I'm not trying to mark them up. I'm not trying to do anything fancy. I'm just trying to get the basic idea. I also will take the notes app in my phone and make a note or I have one note and then I make a bullet point for each of the main topics in the lesson. That way, as I go throughout the week and I have an idea or a thought in my head or I read something or see something, I can just grab my phone and add it to that bullet point underneath. And that way on Saturday, when I go to prep the lesson, I've got some materials to work with. So that's the first thing I do. Um, the next thing I'd recommend is the reason I have those main topics outlined. One of the temptations when you're a gospel doctrine teacher is to try and sound cool. <laughs> you wanna come up with something that they haven't heard before, you wanna teach in a way that nobody's seen before, and sometimes as you're studying and reading, it can get really tempting to sort of veer off the lesson. So I've found if I put those bullet points in my phone and they're the first thing I type into my lesson when I'm doing it on Saturday night, it helps me kind of refocus. If I find I've got a quote or a point that doesn't fit any of those main topics, then I ditch it because generally we're just supposed to teach what's in the lesson and kind of build on what we feel is right. So that's my help for you right on that one. Um, during the week, again, I have a big family and a lot of responsibilities, so I can't, I can't pour through a whole bunch of awesome books. There are great ones out there. I don't own any of them. Instead, I go to um, any source I can either listen to or watch to try and do a lot of my research. So in addition to reading the scriptures throughout the week, I usually will listen to, I love the Institute Manual. It's online and you can hear it a lot of times depending on which year you're in. Um, but you can listen to that one or at least read through it. The Institute Manual is a great resource if there's some scriptures you're a little fuzzy on. Um, another good one is I always try and listen to at least the last two or three conferences. I don't listen to the whole conference, but I'll kind of skim all the talks from the last two or three and pull out any that match those bullet points that I've set out and then just try and listen to those while I'm in the car or I'm getting ready in the morning. That way I'm kind of, you know, priming myself with the latest um, revelation on that particular topic. Another really good one um, is the BYU Devotionals. The BYU-Idaho and BYU-Provo both put out devotionals weekly and they have a podcast, so I listen to those all the time or I will skim through and see if there's any that apply to the bullet points for me. So that's a really good resource. There's a video podcast on YouTube um, put out by the Interpreter Foundation. It's not a church-sponsored podcast, but generally I've found that their stuff is pretty on point. Um, they are more scholarly than me, so it's not always what I would teach, but it usually gives me a lot of background historically on what's happening in those chapters, and I've just found it to be a good resource. So I use all those throughout the week, and then again, put notes in my phone as I kind of get ideas for what to do. The last thing I tell you during the week is to also read other things and listen to other things. Most of my object lessons and you know, kind of creative parts of my lesson come from real life, not from what I read in a book. So if you only listen to those church podcasts or you only you know, are exposed to doctrinal books, then it's hard to come up with object lessons. So I found being out in the world and listening to other podcasts that are interesting or reading other things or watching the news kind of helps you relate to your students a little bit better because that's what they're seeing throughout the week. So I would encourage you not to get too deep. I think it's fine to have a mixture of both. Um, Saturday night before my lesson, that's when I type up my lesson. So I gather all those notes and I like to use my iPad. So I have this size iPad and I put all my lessons in Keynote, which is kind of like PowerPoint, um, because I found it's really, really handy to be able to just 
hand off my iPad to someone in class. That way I'm never passing out slips of paper with a quote on them. Um, I can just pass around my iPad. It's also really nice because you can incorporate the church media right into your presentation. So if I have a quote from Gordon B. Hinckley or something, instead of just reading it, I can actually insert the video clip from that new LDS media app and insert it right into my keynote presentation. So I really like teaching from an iPad. I also like it because I just do bullet points. I don't have to type out everything. I can just look at my bullet points and use them as a reference. So I highly recommend if you have an iPad or a laptop maybe to use that in class. Um, I also try to have a personal story or some kind of mini object lesson on every single slide. So at least in each of those big bullet point areas, I try to have some kind of object lesson. Um, I, I call it an ATOT in my notes for apply the teaching to our time. And really that's just a reminder to me that the scriptures aren't, you'll lose your class if you do too much in the doctrine. Although you could take the entire class period to just teach the verses, it helps your class to kind of coax them in a little bit, so to relate things back to their life. So I try and have one of those on every single slide. Um, if you want to see mine, you can go on SlideShare and view them. I have all of them up there for free. Um, I also try and incorporate a few unanswered questions on all of my slides. So that way I don't feel the pressure that I'm supposed to know everything or understand everything before I walk into class. There are some questions I don't know the answer to. So I write them in my notes as a question and I just put them out there to the class. Usually I try to kind of guide the discussion so it doesn't go off on some tangent, but I found that having questions in your notes that are open often brings the best kind of comments. You get discussions and you get you know, commentary that you wouldn't have seen coming. So I really encourage you to have some open-ended questions that you don't necessarily know the answer to. Um, the other thing I like to do, it, this is on Sunday morning now. So Saturday night I type out everything. Sunday morning I post my SlideShare on, um, sorry, I post my keynote on a website called SlideShare. Um, this is just a place where you, people share PowerPoints. But I've found it's really handy because then I can, if there are people in my class that want to follow along on their phone or on their tablet, they can see it online. They can see all my notes as we go through. It's also nice if I have a quote that somebody needs to read, if they already have it in their lap, it's handy. You never have to set up a projector or a TV or anything fancy because they'll have it in their lap. It's also really good because you can reference all the notes later. So they'll be able to see all the notes from all the different classes if they want to get a quote you did three weeks ago, you can just open up SlideShare and find your notes. So I, ha I highly recommend you check that out. Um, another big thing I found on Sunday is I try really hard to read the verses during the sacrament. I have a lot of kids to take care of and so it doesn't always work out for me, but I've found a lot of times that I'll get very clear inspiration about what I'm supposed to teach or what, how I'm supposed to teach if I'm just reading those verses during the sacrament time. So I encourage you to try and squeeze that in while they're doing, while they're passing the bread and water. Um, another tip was to just be flexible. Uh, a lot of times I'll have 12 slides ready to go on my keynote and we'll get through three of them. And that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. You want discussion. You want a, you know, a group interaction. So be flexible with your stuff. Try not to cram everything in. Instead, just kind of let the spirit guide you as you go along and your class will be better for it. Um, the last thing I'll tell you is to just be forgiving. You're going to have classes that don't go well. You're going to have um, comments that you don't know what to do with and it's going to be tricky. And so sometimes I'll come home from class and I'll think, I totally botched that. There, I, I, I had this great opportunity, this is good doctrine, and I messed it up. Um, and what I found is often on those weeks, that's when I'll get a text from somebody or a, a note from someone saying that something in the lesson really reached them. And what I found is that the Spirit fills in all the gaps. It's kind of like what I talked about when I uh, did the teaching tip on autism. Um, if you do your best to study and to read and to live your normal life um, and then come on Sunday and teach the best you can, the Spirit will make up the difference and you'll find that people get things that you didn't teach. There's oftentimes when I come home from a lesson and I have to write down notes because there's things I was able to teach in class that I didn't even prep, that I didn't know before I stood up in front of that podium. So I encourage you to use the spirit, pray, and answers will come. You'll figure out solutions. So those are my teaching tips for you. If you haven't had a chance to teach gospel doctrine, you should offer at least to sub. It is a beautiful calling that everybody should get a chance to do. So I will give you more teaching tip next week. Thanks guys. See ya.